Hello, everybody. Welcome to Zone Defense. Be sure to follow us on Spotify at Zone Defense Podcast, on Twitter at Zone Defense Pod, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Zone Defense Podcast, and be sure to ring that bell to get post notifications. Also, feel free to drop a comment down below and let us know your thoughts on today's topic. Today, Roman, Chris, and I are diving into our weekly pick'em for Week Nine of the NFL season. How's it going, guys? I'm great, Drew. It's another great week of uh, football, even though we have some more news that could be uh, detrimental to some of these matchups. But uh, I do have to say that we gained another ground, another point on Chris and his lead. Uh, you and <sighs> Drew and Chris are now tied for first. It's very, very uh, interesting now as we go through the coming weeks. Yeah, this sucks. Uh, it's all right though. There's there's a lot of season left. I'm tied. Me and Drew were always kind of in this in the same running. Roman, you're making up a little ground, man. Uh, good job, man. You know it's it's making it a little more interesting. But uh, I, there's no way you're catching me. I mean, I'm just such a superior picker, and there's no way you're gonna pick me. But or uh, so let's go ahead and jump to the uh, the news coming up. Uh, COVID. We'll start with that before we really get into the trade deadline because the the big news that just came out was that the uh, the 49ers and Packers game they have some positive tests but they're still going to play the game which is very surprising to me. I thought it would take a, a two day turnaround to like figure out kind of the close contacts, the contact tracing, and figure out who else is going to have positive tests. But I guess they're just going to play the game anyway. I only see this ending one way, which is just an absolute utter disaster. So. Uh, most likely what, what's going to happen there is that there's going to be a lot more positives for either one of these teams, and then things are going to go poorly. But w- I guess we'll see. Pray for optimism there. But uh, trade deadline recap. This is uh, extremely brief. Uh, it just was such a non-existent trade deadline, which the last couple of years, I mean, normally the NFL trade deadline is not really a big deal. I don't know. I feel like there's not really that many big news. But over the last couple of years, there's been some – some big time trades. I mean, like uh, a trade that I was really interested in last year was Emmanuel Sanders going to the 49ers. I mean, there was obviously other moves as well, but that was that was the one I I was like really interested in that happened. I thought that was a that was a really interesting move for the Niners and really had bolstered their wide receiver core. But this year, I mean, Quan Alexander was traded to the Saints. Avery Williamson was traded to Pittsburgh, and their undefeated season will most likely continue this week as well. And uh, Desmond King. Cornerback for the Chargers was traded to the uh, Tennessee Titans. But other than that, really not that big of moves. I mean, Will Fuller was discussed going to the Packers, but nothing really ever happened with that. I mean, the Patriots made the big Isaiah Moore, Isaiah Ford move, the superstar top five receiver. It was just clear cut. He will be the number yeah, one. Push. Yeah, that, it, they are absolutely primed for a playoff run because of that move. But, uh, yeah, not really any big news here. So we'll, I guess we're just going to jump right into the injuries now. Uh, Ronnie Stanley, this was the big news. Uh, he, he's going to be out for the season. Uh, that's a huge loss for the the Ravens' offensive line. And, I mean, they're, I mean, Lamar Jackson already looks like an absolute trash can this year of a quarterback. The guy has reverted back to his rookie year passing numbers. So, I mean, uh, this isn't going to help. That's for sure. I mean, this isn't going to help the running game. This isn't going to help their passing game. Uh, hopefully they can figure it out. I mean, they're, they're easily – one of the most fraudulent, uh, well above 500 teams in the league, in my opinion. I don't think they're that good this year. But uh, the other injuries we got, um, I mean, the weekly injuries of the 49ers that we could list every single week. We got Jimmy G, Kittle, Tevin Coleman, who's not even on here, Kenny G from the Lions, which and and Trey Flowers. Both of those were big injuries for the for the uh, Lions. Not good at all. Uh, Daryl Henderson, but he's got the bye. I think he's going to be all right. Calvin Ridley with the, the foot injury. I also think he's going to be okay. And then Jonathan Taylor came up with an ankle injury, which could just be an excuse for him running for two yards of carry. But also, uh, in more seriousness, he he's probably injured, and that's why he sucked. But uh, uh, been very disappointing so far this year. Uh, could be a player to nominee for the the most disappointing player of the year. Honestly, it's it's very possible. We can go through the mid season awards coming up, but. Uh, Lastly, I guess before we get into the awards, uh, the Jags and Cowboys QB carousel, which is that's what it is. It, it's a clown show with these two organizations. Uh, I mean, Jake Luton for the Jacksonville Jaguars is going to start this week. I uh, don't really know much about him. Probably going to suck. I mean, it, it's only it's only right. I mean, Gardner wasn't even playing that good, so I, I'm not really expecting much for him. And then we got former CMU great legend Cooper Rush is most likely going to start for the Cowboys and that is just an absolutely it's a great move honestly he's probably an upgrade from Ben DiNucci uh you can't really be a downgrade from him but I mean (laughs) Cowboys offense it's been a train wreck the last couple weeks I mean I don't think it can get much worse but 
who really knows to be honest i i they, they could probably put one of us three at quarterback and it would be a slight it'd be just a slight downgrade from what they're getting production wise at the quarterback position over the last couple of weeks but um do you think either the Jags or the Cowboys have any chance to win a game coming up in with these backup quarterbacks true uh maybe I don't know I feel I probably <laughs> feel a little more confident in the Cowboys just because they play in the NFC East and they, I mean, they were kind of in that game as bad as their offense looked. They weren't like out of that game against Philadelphia by any means until until yeah, late. For that. Yeah, and uh, I mean, obviously they got a really tough matchup this week. But I, I mean, I I have more counts in them this weekend on victory. The Jags, um, they're just not a good football team, and uh, I think Dallas. At least there's some pieces around there that maybe could lead them to a victory. Yeah, I, and, I agree. Nothing, nothing much to say there. Yeah. Um, well, I guess if we're uh, I guess if we're done with that, Drew. Take it away for the mid-season awards. Yeah, so um, we're going to break down a few of the uh, actual award races and our, give our picks for who, who's who got the award, who's the front runner for the award, at least at the mid-season point. Um, I know some teams are on by, but headed into week nine. Um, it's kind of the unofficial midway point of the NFL season, so we'll break down MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, and Rookie of the Year, and then we're, we also added a two – uh, fake awards, but they're still interesting nonetheless. Uh, most disappointing team and player, and then most surprising team and player. So, interested to see what you guys will have for all those awards. We'll start with the big one the NFL MVP. And Roman, who is your MVP at the midway point of the NFL season? It, it just has to be Russell Wilson. He's the clear front runner. Um, I'm very surprised he still hasn't gotten an MVP vote in his whole career. That's obviously going to change. Yeah, I've never heard that from any ESPN Monday Night Football <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> yeah, almost every time you talk, everyone talks about him, he says that's the big thing about him, although he has a ring. And he's short, and he's short too. Yes, very true. <laughs> so obviously this is going to be a much different year for him. He's playing out of his mind. Um, and the front runner of their division as well. So if they win the division, um, he's going to get MVP votes. He's probably going to win over some other uh, guys that we might talk about unless we're all – um, favorite to Wilson at the, at the point at this moment. So he's clearly my favorite to win and um, he should continue his high level of play. Yeah. Uh, I ended up going with Patrick Mahomes for this. I mean, you just look at how good he played last week. Uh, five to- I know it was against the Jets, but still five touchdown passes over 400 yards. He's obviously, obviously Russell Wilson. He may be the favorite right now, but I think the, the, uh, the ward will end up going to Patrick Mahomes. I think he's just such a great player. Uh, he's been a little on and off this year so far, but uh, when he's been on, he looks easily still like the best quarterback in the league. I think this offense is starting to get their footing under them after a great performance against the Jets where they just didn't absolutely did not need to run the football because Patrick Mahomes is just better than everybody else. I mean, there was like seven different receivers that felt like had 50-yard touchdowns in that game. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go with Mahomes here, I think. I think the Chiefs are front runners to win the Super Bowl yet again this year. I think he is going to carry them that way. I mean, I know their defense is better this year, but it's it's still Patrick Mahomes' team, so I'm going with him. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, Mahomes is really good. Um, I'm just looking at his stats right now. He's got more passing yards. And he's only got one interception on the year so far. I know, that, that's incredible. Um, but he doesn't have uh, as many touchdowns as Wilson or as good of a completion percentage. Um, and Wilson's only thrown six interceptions. He was he went a little while there without any interceptions, but he's kind of and then he had like fourteen. Yeah, he turned turn the ball over a little more recently. But um, ultimately, this is a narrative based award. Um, we kind of seen the last few years, and I think with Mahomes, I know he didn't win the MVP last year, but he won it two years ago, and he's widely regarded as the best player in the at least the most popular best player. I know people get into is a quarterback an actual football player or not people get into arguments like that all the time. But in terms of the MVP, Mahomes is the person that people most view as, as the MVP. So for me, um, I think it's going to go to Russell Wilson um, just because as you said, Roman, um, he's got, he, it's the big narrative around him is that he's never won. He's never um, gotten even a single MVP boat. That's definitely not going to happen this year unless he goes down with an injury. But even then I think he's had such a great season so far that he would get at least one vote, I think. Um, but he's got the Seahawks looking like maybe the best team in the NFC, if not a top two NFC team for sure. They're going to, if they, their defense can can find a way here to get a little bit better. Um, I think the Seahawks are going to be a really serious um, Super Bowl contender, and I, it wouldn't surprise me if we see Mahomes and Wilson in, in the uh, in the Super Bowl. Um, but for me, it's it's got to be Russell Wilson right now. Um, yeah, he's he's got to be the MVP for me. But I, I see where you're coming from, Chris. I think Mahomes is obviously a, a really good player as well, and that game against the Jets definitely helped his case because he was off to a little bit of a slower start. Right. Um, so we'll jumping now to defensive player of the year. Um, since Roman, you let us off with the MVP. 
why don't you lead us off again with the defensive player of the year? Yeah, I haven't watched a whole lot of this player, but from what I've seen, um, very dominant, Miles Garrett for the Cleveland Browns. Um, he's definitely going to be up there along with some other defensive players, one in the, in the division that we might talk about. I'm not sure what you guys think about him, but um, from what I've seen, very dominant, um, very contributing to that success that Cleveland's had so far this season, and he's going to get some recognition for it this year. Yeah, I mean, it, it's – for me, it's between the two defensive ends. I mean, if you want to call this guy an actual defensive, I just call him uh, an entire defense by himself. Aaron Donald, he has nine sacks so far this year. Same as Miles Garrett, but this dude handles like triple teams, quadruple teams. Sometimes the entire offensive line just blocks him. So, I mean, he, he's clearly – he's going to be a finalist for sure. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Miles Garrett, also a good pick. He's been absolutely dominant this year too, and he's really developing into one of the better pass rushers in the league. But I think this is a war for Aaron Donald to lose that Garrett is going to have to significantly outperform him to win, I guess, if that makes sense. But both are very good picks for sure. Drew, who do you got? So, yeah, I'm the I'm the tiebreaker again because I do have one of the two guys you've already mentioned. Um, Miles Garrett, he has been really good for sure. Um, as you said, Chris, him and Donald have the same amount of sacks. Um, and Donald actually has um, – he has 19 solo tackles to Donald's only uh, 15, as well as he has four forced fumbles to uh, Donald's only, quote-unquote, three forced fumbles. But at the same time, I got to go with Aaron Donald um, just because the Rams are a top-10 defense. He's clearly the guy – I mean, they just zone in on him. The Browns – I mean, Garrett, it seems like he gets a strip sack every freaking game, but at the same time, they're, they're a decent defense, but not as good as the Rams. And I do like rewarding the team a little bit. Um, in these type of awards. I know it's kind of controversial, but I think how good that Rams defense has been uh, with a guy like Aaron Donald um, leading the charge for sure, him along with Jalen Ramsey, um, I think it's got to be go to Aaron Donald. And I think um, we could see him get a lot more sacks here down the stretch. So um, I think Donald, Donald's got to be it for me. I think he's won the award twice already a couple years ago, back-to-back yeah. years. I think he gets his third yeah. Defensive Player of the Year award this year. I just want to quickly interject when I said talking about Miles Garrett. I kind of also hinted at TJ Watt. I don't know if you guys were going to yeah. bring him up at all, but I've obviously I think the finalists could be easily Donald Garrett and uh, TJ as well. Yeah, yeah, they sure could be. Garrett and Watt were the two guys behind uh, Donald on my quote unquote ballot, if you want to call it that. Um, we'll jump into the, the final actual award that we're going to discuss today, and that's Rookie of the Year. Um, I think there's probably two clear cut favorites. Um, when I was doing some just to kind of see what other people were saying, it sounded like it really came, between, came down between two of the top picks in last year's draft. Um, so, Roman, did you go off the board or did you decide between one of those two players? No, I'm going to go with Joe Burrow, kind of be a little bit boring. I know there's plenty of other rookies that have been playing out of their mind and have been surprising, which is why I'll talk about them later. But obviously Burrow has done a, a lot for this team. Um, obviously not playing like the worst place team in the division. They'd be a good Titans team last week. Um, very impressive. And I think just the narrative of how uh, the first overall pick usually ends up as the rookie of the year, I think that uh, follows suit here. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna. I, I went ahead with Joe Burrow for this one, man. You know, he's just such a he's such a monster. Uh, I know his record really doesn't show, but I mean, if you look at a guy like Herbert as well, like uh, neither one have really won a lot of games. I mean, it's hard for a rookie to do, but I mean, it, it just really. Uh, I think it's really his award to lose, man. I mean, he's just such a he's such a talented player. Uh, he's really transformed this offense. I mean, this offense stunk last year, but he. He's really transformed, and, and honestly, in my opinion, almost the top 10 offense. I mean, they, they absolutely put up a ton of points every week. So uh, Burrow, I think, is going to run away with the award again. But Herbert is also – he deserves a shout-out for what he's done. Man, I'm really surprised. I When I picked Joe Burrow for my rookie of the year as well, I thought uh, I thought you guys were both going to go with Herbert just because based on what I've seen, what I've heard, Herbert is kind of the favorite, at least among the quote-unquote NFL experts. Um, I mean, Herbert's stats are really good, um, but I mean, he, his record and the fact, I mean, I, here's a little tease to maybe one of the, our later awards, his record and the fact that they just lose so many games that they should win. I, I feel like you got to ding him on that at least a little bit. I know he's a rookie, but I just, Joe Burrow, I mean, I think he could be, he might be one of the, he might be the best quarterback in the AFC North already. And you can make a serious argument for that. Um, I know his stats, he's only got 11 touchdowns. He's only thrown five interceptions though, but he's currently got 2,272 passing yards, which is third 
in the NFL right now. So that's that's impressive for a rookie to do. I think he could be – I know there are some concerns. Maybe he was a product of the LSU offense, whatever. But, uh, I mean, that offensive line is awful. He has looked really, really good. Um, I know this isn't an award for who we think is going to have the best career. It's who had the best season right now. But I still think it has to go to Joe Burrow. Um, but Herbert definitely deserves a shout-out, like you said, Chris. Um, so I kind of teased it there about the most disappointing team and player. Um, so I know Roman, you let us off for the first three awards, but Chris, how would you start us off? Um, who is your most disappointing team and your most disappointing player at the midway, midway point of the season? So um, my most disappointing team this year is the New England Patriots. I thought this was a team that was going to compete for the division and be uh, around 500 at least, but they have just been an absolute dumpster fire. I mean, I thought Cam Newton coming in would really energize this team. And it looked like it to start the year. I mean, he, he played really well. Almost beat the Seahawks. Remember that that came came down to the wire, but uh, since then it's been an absolute disaster. Cam Newton's been horrible. The receivers have been banged up. They can't create separation. The defense has really, honestly, not even been that good. It's an overrated defense this year. That I mean, they're also I mean they did lose a lot to opt outs, but I still thought Belichick could get the job done. I think this signifies change for the New England Patriots. That's why it, it's tough to call them a disappointment because. They did lose a lot going into the year, but I really, I really still expected them to be a good team, and they're just—they're not that anymore. They're not—they're not a powerhouse. But uh, the most disappointing player is for me, it's Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's been—he's wow. gone from the MVP to being, I would say, an average to below average quarterback this year. He's been—I think he's been terrible. I mean, he's turning the ball over. He's not running very successfully. He's—he can't pass to anybody on his roster. So I mean, I just Lamar has been utterly disappointing me. I thought this was him trying to close the gap to Mahomes, to be honest. I mean, after last year, he, he played fantastically last year, and he was clearly the best player in the NFL last season up until the playoffs. But, I mean, I was like, oh, yeah, he'll go into this year hungry. He's going to be better. Uh, I expect him and the Ravens to potentially win the Super Bowl. But I, it's not looking that way unless Lamar f figures it out with the, with the arm. But it, it, he hasn't been very good, in my opinion. Not, not to say I called it, but I remember going back to our preview episodes. I was worried about Lamar because I thought the defense would adjust to him, and I didn't think he was going to be as good. Um, and so far, like you said, he's proven. I mean, I, th I think he's still been okay. Uh, he's not. He wasn't my most disappointing player, um, but yeah, he definitely was. I considered him for sure because he has he hasn't played like the MVP or the superstar Mahomesian player that we kind of thought right. he would be. Um, and that's how I see him now. I yeah. think he's. Yeah. I thought he was at that level, but I guess he's just he's not. A, he's flat out not. Yeah, uh, Roman, who do you have for your most disappointing team and player? My disappointing uh, team is the 49ers. They were in the Super Bowl last year, obviously, and had most of the returning roster besides trading away DeForest Buckner and letting uh, Emmanuel Sanders walk. So obviously coming into this season, they had a great roster. They had a good draft as well and even trades for Trent Williams. So there was still a high standard for them. And then they come out week one and lose to the Cardinals, who we didn't necessarily have any expectations for, although we, they had Hopkins um, and they were primed to be good. We all thought, well, I thought at least that San Francisco would win that game and have a, a continual, uh, continual run at the division. However, it does not look like that at all. And you can attribute that to either a hangover or – Obviously, all the injuries they've had because it's all been detrimental to the team, losing Bosa, Kittle, Jimmy G. But I think that that's just an umbrella for how disappointing the team has performed. And the fact that they probably won't make the playoffs is just disappointing uh, with their standards as a, as a whole. Oh, yeah, I and, think this, oh, God. And, as, and as well as my uh, disappointing player, I also went with Lamar Jackson. He's very mediocre. Wow. And I've, I've noticed that even uh, Roethlisberger is outplaying him. So that's very telling. Yeah. In terms of how disappointing he's been, considering he won the MVP last year, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they didn't win the division this year and it goes uh, flat yeah. out to the Steelers. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, I think the uh, I think the Steelers are going to win the division, which is yeah, part partly is because of the performance of Lamar Jackson, partly is also because the Steelers are a fantastic team. But uh, I do think the Niners are a similar uh, situation to the Patriots, a team that I expected to be good again this year. Ran into some injuries, but also are well underperforming what I expected them to do. I mean, the Niners are a team that can win games basically with no matter who's behind center and who's in their backfield. I know George Kittle, big loss, but I mean, what they're not great with. Him. They weren't great with him. So uh, I this I expect them to miss the playoffs, but that could end up being a good thing because they may draft the parent to Jimmy G, which is a possibility and should be a possibility for this team because they need to get rid of him. 
I, I had um, I had the Niners and both the Patriots kind of some honorable mentions for my most disappointing team. Um, the Niners, I just I think you can't overlook the injuries. I feel like if they didn't have as many injuries, uh, maybe their their training their uh, training staff is uh, is the most disappointing team of the NFL this year because they just keep getting injuries after injuries. But I couldn't just ding them. I, you know, they haven't looked great um, even when people have been healthy, but they've barely had people healthy. So that's why ultimately they, didn't, they weren't my disappointing team. And the Patriots, um, I didn't have them as a playoff team headed into the year anyway, so I couldn't really put them as my disappointing team. Um, however, my most disappointing team is a team I kind of teased at a little bit earlier, and that's the Los Angeles Chargers. And I know that might be a little like, what, really? Mm-hmm. But they're 2-5, and five, and they were not I – mean, I know, I think, Chris, you might have had them as a dark horse playoff team headed into the year, um, but a lot, not many people were high on them. Um, however, I mean, you look at their – I know the record's 2-5, and five, but they could – easily have won four of the games they lost. I mean, you look at the Broncos game, the Saints game, the Buccaneers game, and the Chiefs game. They were up double digits late and e- and just had to close the game out. And whether it be coaching, um, I think Herbert's look good, but it it's mainly comes down to the coaching and Anthony Lynn. They, for whatever reason, they just cannot close a game out. And I think this team, I mean, they're headed for one of the worst records in the league, another top 10 pick, um, but they easily, easily could be a playoff team. And they're not even anywhere close to that because they can't close out games against really good teams too. So I think they have the talent, um, but they just really disappointed me. Yeah. And then uh, most disappointing player, uh, it's Chris's favorite player in the NFL, Carson Wentz. Um, just This was a guy who was an MVP candidate a couple years ago, and now he's got uh, under 2,000 passing yards, which is okay, but he's got 12 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, trying to do a yeah. double-double like Jameis Winston did last year, under 60% completion percentage. Just looks so erratic, lost. I know the Eagles have a lot of injuries as well. They could be another disappointing team, even though they're leading the division somehow. Um, <laughs> their NFC East is just a disappointing team for the most part. But uh, you just look at Wentz, he just is super regressed, very similar to Josh Allen, I think, a little bit. Another kind of disappointing player after the hot start he got to. But Carson Wentz, um, he had to, he had to take the cake ultimately for my most disappointing player because he's just has not looked good. And I'm kind of worried there for his uh, future career. Yeah, at least um, in Philadelphia. I'm not going to chalk it up all to injuries for Carson Wentz. Uh, he's made decisions that no receiver, Alshon Jeffrey, isn't going to help him make a decision where he airmails the receiver by 10 yards when yeah. he throws across his body after seven seconds in the pocket. So um, it's, it's, it's definitely a Carson Wentz thing. He needs to figure it out. Uh, I still have belief in him. I'm kind of a, uh, I'm a truther. I think Wentz is very talented, but I mean, he's, he tests my fandom every single week because he's making some boneheaded decisions. He, he did come out with the win, but it was against Ben DiNucci, which is a guy that I believe that I have could compete with like, on the football field. Personally, I don't think he's that much better than, <laughs> an average person at quarterback, but uh, Wentz uh, definitely needs to pick it up in the second half. I think he could do it. I think um, I, I believe he has a chance to, uh, to turn it around, but I, I do agree. He was, he was somebody I considered if, if not for Lamar's fall back down to earth and his MVP season last year, I would have probably gone with Wentz. Well, it, it seems like Philadelphia doesn't make the playoffs anyway. So they'll have plenty of time to turn it around and hopefully uh, Wentz can give him a playoff win. Yeah, I mean it's possible. I, that's that's something Wentz would do. He would suck all the way up to the playoffs, and then he gets in the playoffs, and then they win a playoff game or two that no one absolutely expects them to win. Which is, I think that's definitely a possibility. I mean, they keep it close with a lot of different teams. It's not like they're getting blown out every week. It's it's just come down to a couple of decision making problems with Carson Wentz is why they've they've uh, struggled, I guess, even with all the injuries. I think they're also th- th- sorry. They're also unable to. Um take care of teams that they're clearly better than. And I think a lot of that comes down to Wentz. You look at the last two weeks, Cowboys, Giants, they should have easily won those games and they were came down to the wire. The Giants game, they probably should have lost down the stretch. So yeah. a lot of that rests on Wentz's shoulders. But hopefully yeah. hopefully he'll improve. Um, but Chris, why don't you finish this off here with the final award, the most surprising team and player for a more positive ending to the segment. I mean, yeah, uh, I'm going to take – for my most uh, surprise team so far this year, I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins. This is one of a, a couple options I have for this. I think the Dolphins, um, it's surprising that they're – honestly, it's mostly their defense, man. I know I know Fitzmagic was, was doing a good job on the offensive side of the football, but uh, their defense has been incredible. They're forcing turnovers at a very high rate. They're beating these uh, – they're beating the – I mean, these they're beating – well, they've beaten two teams from I, what I consider easily the best division in football in the uh, NFC best <laughs> – but uh, the, they lost to the Seahawks in close fashion, and then they were able to take down both the Rams and the Niners and make both those teams look absolutely pathetic. And 
Uh, I mean, most disappointed player, you could also throw Jared Goff in there, but he's just trash anyway. But uh, um, it's, it remains to be seen if this is actually a legitimate playoff contending team with Tua. But, uh, I mean, he, he looked okay in the limited reps he got last week. He didn't do anything to absolutely destroy their chances of winning the game, and they really didn't need him to do much because the defense and special teams played so good for Miami. But uh, this is a team that's really surprised me with how good they've been, and they also have the Texans pick. So this is – they're going to be, honestly, in my opinion, uh, a very legitimate playoff contender next year and for the future. I think this is a team that is going to be considered a powerhouse if they make some good moves. But uh, – my uh, my player, my most surprising player this year is – it's an Eagles player. It's Travis Fulgham. I mean, yeah. this dude that was cut from multiple teams, including our hometown lines, which is no surprise. I mean, we cannot recognize talent if it shot us in the face. So, <laughs> Travis Fulgham, uh, he's been clearly the number one receiver, number one target for Carson Wentz in this offense. He's been fantastic. I mean, this isn't just the fantasy football – uh, showing, but since he's taken over as the one, he's been awesome as a fantasy football player, getting a ton of volume. But he's also been a key target for Carson Wentz. I know he's played like crap, but when he makes good throws, it's usually to Travis Fulgham because he's getting open, he's creating separation, he's scoring touchdowns too, which is a big deal for them. They need to punch the ball in the end zone to win games. So, uh, a, a really nice story for this dude uh, who was cut from two teams before the season, finds his way on the Eagles team, and is playing like a uh, at least a starting caliber wide receiver, in my opinion. I think this is not a mirage. I think this is a guy that could be a future asset for this team. Yeah, I think I think the Dolphins actually have a shot at the playoffs this year. Yeah, um, the, the Bills haven't looked great, and as you said, the Dolphins are trending in the right direction. Um, and Travis Fulgham, yeah, he's, as you said, was a former Lion. I kind of forgot he was in the Lions because we just never played him that much. Um but uh, and then we ended up cutting him, of course. But um, yeah, both both good picks, Chris. Uh, Roman, who are your two picks for this award? Yeah, I actually have a couple for each because I think they're both worthy of of noting. First of all, I'll talk about the Browns. Um, we kind of stressed in the in the preseason how Baker needs to have a bounce back season to uh, have any success, and he hasn't been the best he can be. But he's certainly played to a level that they're winning more games. Than we would expect them to, and obviously it's going to be a tough division to compete in. I don't expect them to win the division, but they're at least surprising at the fact that they're keeping an above above 500 record and they're going to compete for the playoffs. I think they'll make the playoffs, and that's just I think surprising in general because uh, last year we were fooled, obviously because on paper they looked good, but they surprised uh, people by not being as good as people thought. So I think to turn the needle on that is surprising, as well as Tampa Bay, which might seem a little bit of a weird pick, but I th- I'm sure we were all a little bit skeptical, maybe curious in how Tom Brady would perform in Tampa Bay. And I, I'm, I'm at least surprised that he's actually playing like a borderline MVP candidate. And especially with all the weapons around him, I'm surprised that this team was able to flip the switch, go from a, a terrible team with Jameis Winston. Well, partially it's because Jameis Winston, obviously putting an MVP quarterback in there, obviously raises the level of the whole team. But the fact that they're going to win, they're probably going to win the division, compete with the Saints, which I think is surprising. Uh, compete for the Super Bowl as well. So I, I, I want to note that as well. And then for the player, I'm going to talk about Justin Herbert because although I don't think he'll win Rookie of the Year, he's been very, very well. I know that, Chris, you were the lowest on him coming out of the draft. And I, I didn't know when we would see him at first, but obviously he deserves to be the starter over Tyrod Taylor. And I think when you, when you talked about the least, uh, the most disappointing team, Drew, for the for the Chargers, I think it's not... Uh, it's not um, unseen that a quarterback puts up good numbers, but they still blow games with Phillip Rivers. And I think that's just kind of the narrative they're going to have with Herbert. Hopefully they can turn it around, but he's been very surprising. and I've been very impressed with him as well. And then one other player I want to note is James Robinson, because we didn't even know who he was before the season started. And uh, Fournette got cut surprisingly, but they were, they, were, they didn't skip a beat with James Robinson. He's been putting up great numbers. He's a top running, uh, running back of the, uh, in the league this year. Great fantasy option as well. So I think he was definitely worth noting. Yeah, a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, diff- good players, good teams there. Uh, I think I had all of them except Tampa Bay just because I was higher on Tampa Bay. But all the other three that you mentioned there, they were all on my list because I think uh, they've, they've all been very surprising, especially Herbert. I mean, I know we, we trashed Chris because he was low on him, but I also was not high on him as well. Um, and I was very surprised that he's he's looked as good as he has because uh, just in terms of stats, I mean, he just puts up stats. If he can just find a way to win some games here, I think he could be – I think he's going to be a really, really good quarterback for years to come. But uh, do you have any thoughts on those, Chris, or do you want me to jump into my picks? 
Yeah, you got to jump in here. They're, they're definitely good picks as well, guys. I considered as well. Uh, Herbert, yeah, I'm, I'm eating my words on that one. He was, he was awesome. <laughs> Um, all right, so as I mentioned there, Justin Herbert, he was actually my runner-up. I almost picked him. I'm kind of happy I didn't because, Roman, you picked him. Um, I also had the Dolphins down, Browns down, Raiders, Titans, Seahawks, Cardinals, Packers. I think those are all some good, surprising teams. But ultimately, I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I mean, they're undefeated, and I think heading into the year, I don't think many of us expected them to be um, undefeated um, and looking like maybe the best team in the NFL, uh, at least right there with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I, j- I mean, I had them as, I think, like a – nine and seven, 10 and six kind of team would sneak in as a wild card behind the Ravens. Um, that was kind of their ceiling for me. Um, but they just look at both sides of the ball. I think their offense also could kind of reach another level. If Roethlisberger can maybe improve a little bit, uh, Juju gets a little bit, um, gets better. Deontay gets healthier. I think they, their offense could reach another level and they could even be even better than they are right now. And their defense, even though they lost Devin Bush, um, they still haven't missed a beat. So for me, they gotta be the most surprising team. Um, and they're probably the best team, at least in terms of record, they are the best team in the NFL so far. And then for my most surprising player, he could have been the most surprising player last year too, um, but it's got to be Ryan Tannehill. Uh, he's got 17 touchdowns, only three interceptions, um, over eight, um, 1,800 passing yards. Uh, he's he's kind of – he was quietly in the MVP conversation there for a little bit. I know he's had a couple down weeks. The Titans overall have had a couple down weeks overall, um, but they're still 5-2, and two, a lot better than I know I anticipate them being probably the best team in the AFC South. Um, if they can improve, if they can kind of find that momentum again, I think uh, Tannehill and the Titans could, could make a deep playoff run as well. Um, and he's like, he, he's, I thought maybe last year was just a flash in the plan, but he, he's really showed that he was more of a victim of Adam Gase in Miami. And he's, he's a really talented and, and good quarterback there in Tennessee, a team that really needed a quarterback for a very long time. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's a good pick for sure. He's, he's a beast. Yeah. I, I'm certainly uh, regretting my take on Tannehill going into this season. He certainly, um, performed past my expectations. Do um, and I think in the division, when you look at the, that division, uh, that can be partly due to the ineptitude of Bill O'Brien trading away his best player. Maybe the Texans would have been more competitive, but obviously <laughs> with a running back like Derrick Henry and some nice weapons, um, Tannehill has everything he needs, and he's and he's proving people that um, he wasn't a fluke in Miami. Yeah, I've, I've always been, as, as Chris has been, like a Bridgewater or a Wentz truther, I've always been a Ryan Tannehill truther. So I'm really happy to see him uh, him playing well there in Tennessee. Um, any final thoughts on the midseason awards where we hop into the pick'em? No, I think we're good. All right. So let's start off with the Packers Niners, which as of right now, at the time of this recording, um, it is still scheduled for Thursday night, despite the Niners shutting down their facility due to some, some positive COVID-19 test. Uh, but regardless, we're still going to uh, pick the game, um, hoping that it eventually happens by the time this, this episode goes up. So um, Chris, how would you start us off here? Do you have the Packers or the Niners? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Packers in this one and take it, keep it short and sweet. They're the better team. Uh, they're going to win this game. I know the, Ni- the Niners actually dominated them a couple of times last year, uh, both in the regular season and going into the playoffs. But I think an angry Rodgers coming off the loss, I don't see a way that they lose, especially they're the banged up uh, the Niners. Yeah, they're, they're really banged up right now. And Kendrick Bourne tested positive, too. That's another weapon that's going to be out the door. It's basically just the brand of Aisha. Yeah, I, I agree about Green Bay. Although they are going to probably be without Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, they'll probably be have to deep uh, reach deep into their running back core. I do think they'll get it done, and obviously Rodgers doesn't lose two in a row very often. Yeah, I love the Nick Mullins, uh, Brandon Ayuk show as much as the next guy, but I just don't think it's going to be enough to overcome the Packers. Um, I am a little worried about the Packers though because they haven't looked as good here the last couple weeks. Um, but I, I still think they're one of the best teams in the NFC. Aaron Rodgers um, was almost one of was almost my MVP pick, a guy we forgot to mention earlier. Um, but yeah, I think Green Bay. If this game is played, hopefully it gets played. I think Green Bay um, holds a significant advantage on Thursday night. Um, but next up, we got the Lions Vikings. Um, I might just be a homer. I am a homer. I know that. But this seemed like just a very tight contest between two mediocre football teams. It was really hard for me to pick. Um, but Chris, somebody start us off. Who do you think is going to uh, hold a hold the edge here um, in a NFC North rival tilt? Yeah, and I was absolutely planning on picking the Detroit Lions in this game before the week started, but they absolutely look. They look so bad last week. I mean, they're down Kenny G. They're down Trey Flowers. I now I don't see how they win this game. I think in Minnesota. I think the Vikings will get the job done. Uh, they looked good last year. Uh, 
just kind of dominated the Packers. I mean, if they're going to do that to the Packers, the Lions clearly can't beat the Packers. So I and they usually also have the Lions numbers as well in talking about the Minnesota Vikings. So I, I'm going to go with them in this one. Yeah, I'm going to go next because Roman insisted he fin- final, finishes it off here. Um, so maybe he's going to pick the Lions. But I, I got to go with the Vikings too. Um, and this is not just recency bias because I was actually going to pick the Lions even after watching them get absolutely destroyed by the Colts last week. However, it's the injuries that concern me. It's the fact that Trey Flowers is, is hurt. Kenny G is hurt. Their team look, did not look good last week. The Vikings seem to be figuring some things out here. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout, and the Lions could definitely win this game. But um, unfortunately, I think the Vikings hold a slight advantage here and could, could find find a way to victory. But Roman, who do you have here? Yeah, I'm going to have to pick the Vikings on this one. I think obviously wow. it, it, it's going to be it's going to be tough without uh, Galladay and Flowers. I'm excited to see Griffin in this game and his debut for the Lions. Uh, if we had trouble with Naeem Hines and Jordan Wilkins last week, I don't see how we stopped Dalvin Cook after the performance he put up last week. It's going to be really tough. And as you kind of said, Chris, we've lost, I think, four straight to the Vikings. So it's not going to get any easier. But I'm, I'm very – I, I, I want it to be close. I just it, – it's it's tough. It's tough. It really is. Is this the first time you haven't picked the yeah, Lions all year? Um, no, I, I didn't pick – I picked the, the Packers over them. Okay. Second time, uh, yeah. second time in what eight weeks because they had the bye. Wow, I mean that's, I'm shocked. I'm genuinely shocked. I think as Chris uh, shared that sentiment as well. <laughs> yeah, that, this is a surprising pick. Uh, now their lines are gonna win because Roman picked against them. We're all on the on the Vikings this week. Is Detroit with the injuries? They're gonna find a way to get the job done now, of course. There's 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 certainly a, a roadmap as Drew would put yes. it, but. Uh, because obviously Minnesota has been dealing with their own kind of injuries. Their defense has not been great. I'm not sure. I think their starting quarterback, Jeff Gladney, might be on a COVID list or IR or something like that. So obviously, yeah, you could I see, believe he got injured last week. Yeah, so we could we could see more Marvin Jones. I'm interested to see how they use Cephas. And obviously, we need a better run game if we're going to beat the Vikings. But it, it could go either way. And I, I'm still going to root for them, obviously. But I'm glad we kind of washed this game. And let's just forget about it. Let's ever happened. <laughs> Let's just forget that this season ever happened. Anyway, uh, jumping to the next game here, Broncos, Falcons, two teams that just pulled wins out of their behind last week. Falcons over the Panthers, Broncos somehow over the Chargers. But uh, nevertheless, Roman, uh, you went second here for the first two games. So who do you got, Broncos or Falcons? I think this will be a a pretty good game. they both obviously coming off wins, um, exciting down-to-the-wire wins. Uh, I'm going to go with Denver on this one. I, I normally would have picked Atlanta, but I think the fact that uh, how cohesive Locke has been after the coming back from his injury, I'm, I've been impressed with him and his offense and they're getting they're, all their weapons more integrated, even like the backups. Um, they're getting more work uh, from Drew Locke, and I think their defense is starting to come together as well. Um, and the fact that Atlanta may not be without uh, Calvin Ridley, that's also a difference maker in this game. Yeah, uh, I mean, me and Roman, we disagree probably the most out of anyone on the picks, but I'm also going with Denver in this game. I think they're going to come in. They're, they're coming off a huge win. Drew Locke, I thought, played his best game of the year. I know it wasn't great. It wasn't pretty the entire game. He looked really good in the second half. I mean, I mean, you lead a game-winning drive like that at the end of the game, and, and you definitely deserve my respect. But uh, Atlanta, I mean, they, they, they beat the Carolina Panthers, but it was in really ugly fashion. And like Roman said, the difference maker definitely is Calvin Ridley. If Matt Ryan is with it, without any of his top weapons, he usually absolutely bleeps the bed. So I'm going to go with the uh, Denver Broncos. All right, so I'm actually going to be different than you guys for once, and I'm picking the Falcons for this week. Um, I, I just I don't know. I just don't believe in, in Drew Locke that much. Um, I know Atlanta's defense sucks, so the Denver's probably going to score some points, and Denver does have a good defense. But I don't know. There's just something about this Falcons team I've liked the last few weeks. Um, if it wasn't for a, just an absolute collapse against the Lions, they could be 3-0 and uh, under their new head coach. So um, I don't know. I, I like the Falcons. It seems like I, I typically pick against them. Um, so now, of course, the one time I'm picking for them, they're probably going to probably going to lose but uh we'll see what happens um i don't really feel great about either team but i think the falcons uh, can eke out a victory here and win two in a row uh next up we got two teams that are coming off uh big wins in uh rivalry games last week the seahawks over the niners and the bills over the patriots um both teams needed that win to kind of it was a nice get right game the bills still don't look great though after a hot start so uh chris uh, do you have the seahawks or the bills in this one 
Oh man, dude! They, both these teams are. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good game. Uh, I am actually going to go. I think I'm going to go with Buffalo Bills in this game. I think I know they haven't looked great lately, but they're still winning. Uh, I think Seattle has also looked really good, but Russ has made a couple mistakes. I think Buffalo's defense plays out for this game a little bit. I really expect. I think. I think Josh Allen against the secondary, very very beatable secondary, and I can tell by everyone's reaction, I'm probably going to be on an island for this game, but that's all right. I'm Josh Allen. Uh, at least this year, I think he's still got. I'm not an all-time truther because I think he has some uh, some definite flaws in his game, but I think uh, he's still. Pl- I think he's going to play more like he did in the start of the year than he than he has lately in this game, as long as the weather holds up. I, I do think this is going to be one of the best games of the week. I'm not necessarily I'm surprised. Excited. I'm not necessarily surprised to Buffalo. But I'm going to take uh, Seattle because I think they're the better team. Buffalo has kind of faltered the past couple of weeks, and I do think uh, Russell Wilson gets it done. I'm kind of surprised you picked Buffalo, I'll be honest, because you mentioned there that Wilson's made a couple mistakes. Uh, Josh Allen's made quite a few yeah, mistakes yeah. as well. Um, and you also mentioned how Seattle's defense isn't great. Buffalo's defense isn't that great either. Um, so I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair. Um, but I think uh, if, you, if you let Russ cook, as we've seen here these first few weeks, um, the Seahawks usually come up on top more times than not. And I just haven't seen liked what I've seen from the Bills. They seem to be collapsing at the wrong time. Uh, now we have, speaking of collapsing at the wrong time, we have the Chicago Bears versus the Tennessee Titans. Uh, the Bears proved that they were liars, continuing to just not play good football. Um, and the Titans lost to the Bengals, a team. I think we all, we obviously all picked the Titans. The Titans looked like a Super Bowl contender the first few weeks. Uh, and you can't just lose a game to the Bengals, no matter how good Joe Burrow is. Um, so Roman, it's a big get right game for one of these two teams. Um, who do you think it, it who, who do you think ends up winning this game? Yeah, Tennessee's lost to the Bengals. I'm not necessarily con- too concerned with it. I think they'll get right in this game at an absolute blowout because the, the Bears are frauds. We might even see Trubisky in this game. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to watch the Bears crumble. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of similar on this. I know I've been picking the uh, Bears, and I actually think I, I stand behind my pick it, uh, last week. I think they, they kept that game really close. They had a chance to win, but I'm going to go with Tennessee in this one. I think Tennessee gets the job done. They're, they're definitely pissed after that Cincinnati loss. They looked really bad. I think this is a get-right game for them, and I think Chicago uh, – as, as much as it, it pains me to admit it that Roman was right, I, I believe yeah, they're, they're kind of faltering now. They needed last week's win to get, get back on track, and they didn't get it done, so I think they lose this one as well. 100% agree. As you see there, I already put the Titans in. Um, the Bears, I think they, um, they could lose – most of the games here down the stretch as Roman and I accurately predicted. I don't think they're going to be make the playoffs. Um, there, there is a spot up for grabs still. I think the saints and the Cardinals have those two spots. I think those two spots could go to other teams. Um, it'll be interesting to see what goes on there, but I think the Titans get right. And this is still a good football team, even though they haven't looked great here the last couple weeks. But uh, yeah. next up we got the Ravens and the Colts, the Ravens coming off a, a tough loss against the Steelers. Uh, and the Colts coming off a dominating victory over the Detroit Lions, which take that for what it's worth. Uh, but so now we got Ravens Colts. Um, I think it's Chris, your turn. Uh, who do you got? Oh man, it's a, another tough game. I mean, this are two teams kind of trending in the opposite direction for me. I mean, Baltimore losing Stanley, losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I mean, who doesn't lose to them as well? Uh, Indianapolis has been playing really well lately, and they're they're at home. But I think. I'm going to take Baltimore in this game. It, it's going to be really close. I easily could – this week could end up being a disaster for me, picking a lot of different teams that I'm not super confident in. But uh, this matchup, I think, is, is going to be really close. And I, I'm going to – I still think Lamar Jackson's an upgrade from Phil Rivers. I think he has a rough week, even though he's been looking better as of late. Yeah, I kind of share, uh, I kind of share that uh, feeling with you about this matchup. Uh Philip Rivers, obviously, last week was his best game in a while. That's kind of what he does against bad defenses, and it doesn't happen very often. So I think he uses uh, his one good game only ticket um, last week, and I think uh, Baltimore wins this game, although they did put a lot of their players on defense that we didn't mention on either COVID or just IR in general. So it, it would be a close game. I, I do feel like uh, the Colts have a better chance than we're giving them credit for, but I'm going to pick the uh, Ravens, but not as enthusiastically. 
Yeah, this week could be an absolute disaster for me because you mentioned it right there, Roman. The Ravens have a lot of guys on the COVID list. They did not look good last week. I, I'm not just looking in. I'm not just not just recency biased because I do think it's going to be a really close game. I easily see the Ravens coming out on top in this one. But I think with all the things stacking up against the Ravens and how good the Colts are on defense, um, I like kind of like what I saw last week on offense as well. Give it given against the Lions, a weak Lions defense for the most part. Um, and I, I think the Colts eke out a victory here, but this is definitely a, a game of the week candidate as well. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm probably wrong there. I'm probably going to go 0-2 in these two games that I uh, was contrarian, but we'll see. Uh, next up, we have the Panthers-Chiefs. Uh, Panthers continue to trending in the wrong direction after a hot start. Um, a lot of us thought they were going to be a playoff team, but after that loss to the Falcons, that pretty much puts um, all those hopes to rest. And Roman's not even letting me finish off the intro. He's already got the Chiefs down here. Um, and I think uh, we're probably all in agreement there, unless Chris is pulling off a massive upset for Teddy Two Gloves. Yeah, as much as I like Teddy Two Gloves, I mean, he he got a little banged up last week, and it wouldn't matter if he didn't get banged up. It wouldn't matter if he turned into Patrick Mahomes this week. Yeah, they're, they're going to lose this game. I don't think it's going to be particularly close. I As much as I do like Carolina, they were also a team I consider for one of my surprise teams just because they've looked a lot better than I thought. I thought this was going to be an absolutely trash team this year. But uh, Teddy B, I like I like him in, but you're, you're not going to get the job done this week. Yeah, it's sad because the Panthers were easily probably the feel-good story early on, but they've really kind of fallen fallen on some yeah. hard times here um, the last few weeks. So next up, I got to tell you, man, 2020 is a very weird year, but if you would have told me entering week nine, the Giants-Washington football team game would have serious playoff implications, I would have been like, what? But that's what this game has, man. The NFC East is so brutal. The Eagles, they probably are the best team, but uh, these are two teams that have shown flashes of being – maybe a playoff team at least given that division so it's a Giants football team the Giants won just a couple weeks back um, but I'm fascinated to know Roman um, do you have the Giants or Washington in this one yeah last time I took the Giants this time I'm gonna take my shot and take Washington obviously coming off a bye and before that a win against Dallas which take that as you want but I think this week they're gonna be home it's gonna be a close game the Giants not, didn't look too bad against the Buccaneers I guess they kind of faltered late um Daniel Jones will probably make some mistakes, and I, I trust uh, Washington's defense more than I do with uh, the Giants' offense. Yeah, I'm also taking Washington in this game. I think they're they've actually looked pretty good as of late, in my opinion. I think they've uh, they've turned around a little bit, and surprisingly, are in the playoff hunt, which is insane to me. But uh, I think they're the more likely team of the two to to make any actual noise for this division and compete with the Eagles. I think the Giants are done, especially after last week, but. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. They, they definitely, the Giants definitely needed that Tampa Bay win. I, I actually, I thought I'd be the only one to pick Washington, so this is very surprising to me. Yeah, I, I really want to pick the Giants because I, I do, I don't think they've looked bad the last couple of weeks, um, and they've been playing some. Eagles are okay team i guess but the buccaneers are a good team they look they look pretty good for the most part i just don't trust daniel jones um and, and washington's also look good um at least coming off the bye the previous week i think they have extra time to plan um against daniel jones and he doesn't even do good when teams don't have enough time to plan against them so um i think washington ekes out a victory here uh, next up uh the jaguars are maybe people someone pick the jaguars the jaguars are slowly becoming the new jets um i feel like they're just going to lose every game here from now until eternity so um i guess chris you can start us off here but we, it's probably going to be texans all around yeah i'm taking the texans in this game and i don't think it's going to be too close and this is not a matchup i'm very excited to watch i mean there there really isn't much on the line here these are both trash teams uh yeah that's it <laughs> i got nothing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree. Last week, or not last week, the last time these two teams played, it was a pretty close contest, but um, not not this time, no. Yeah, I'm I'm also with Houston. Um, I mean, they didn't really trade anybody, so they're pro they're still an okay team, I guess. They, they'll probably get some wins here down the stretch. But um, next up, we got the Raiders and the Chargers. The Ra I was not a Raiders believer, I'll be honest, but they showed me some things. I mean, for a for a West Coast team to go into the type of conditions they were playing in on Sunday in Cleveland, all the wind, and for them to just out. Um, out tough the Browns really um, was really surprising for me uh, they, they looked really well and they're, they're a dark horse playoff team for sure um, and the Chargers we already kind of talked about it they are continue, continuing to disappoint with another um, tragic uh, depressing whatever you want to call it loss to the, the Broncos uh, a surefire choke job um, so Chris start us off here do you have the Raiders or the Chargers in this one 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this is these are two teams that are kind of I, I see pretty similarly personally. I, I the Raiders looked pretty good last week, but they're just such a hit or miss team. I think I'm going to go with the Chargers in this game. Uh, they're, they're home. Uh, I think Justin Herbert, uh, he needs a win badly. I think he's going to get one this week against the, the Raiders, which uh, it, you may go with the Raiders. This may be another dumb pick that just continues to vault me towards the last place spot of the three of us. But I'm, I'm going to take them in this one. I think the Chargers certainly passed the eye test, I guess, in terms of which team looks more exciting. I know the Chargers have been more in more competitive games, and the uh, Vegas has been kind of if if the past couple weeks, like you said, hit or miss. Um, Jacobs and Waller did not have great games out in the cold, and since this game will be played either indoors or in a sunny environment, I'm going to take the Raiders to win this game um, because I think they need to win more than the Chargers do, and I think they actually have more uh, aspirations for the playoffs. Yeah, give me the Raiders in this one. Um, I mean, I don't, you don't want us to look at it like this, but I mean, the Raiders were able to beat the Saints and the Chargers choked against the Saints in primetime television. So take that for what it's worth. Um, and I think the Raiders, I, I, they looked really good last week. I think, I think and as you said, two, their two best players in Jacobs and Waller didn't even, didn't even look good. So I think they have a bounce back game here against the Chargers and get out get out of victory um so I, I mentioned how the jaguars are kind of the new jets uh, i think the cowboys are also kind of in that category uh we touched on it at length earlier in the show um benny denucci uh cooper rush who's ever starting a quarterback looks awful and i think the steelers are going to easily win this game as does chris i'm assuming roman you feel the same right yeah there's no point to linger this is going to get ugly yeah so uh, is home <laughs> Steelers continue their best start in franchise history, which is kind of remarkable. And we'll get to what eight no now, which is very impressive. So yep. uh, this is a game that we're probably going to disagree on um, dolphins, Cardinals, Chris's favorite team versus Chris's most surprising team. So it'll be interesting to see uh, who he picks in this one. Um, the Cardinals are probably the better team, but the dolphins are really hot right now. I've seen some experts picking the dolphins to uh, win this game. Um, but uh, Roman, how about you start us off? Who do you have in this one? Yeah, I think it was quite impressive that the Dolphins uh, beat the Rams last week, but I don't think that had any had anything to do with Tua. I know their defense and special teams both had a touchdown to kind of propel them in front, as well as the Rams just not looking like themselves. Um, we didn't even see Tua throw the ball that much. She only had like a couple 20-ish attempts even. And I think uh, if, it's, if it's in terms of Kyler versus Tua, Kyler wins that matchup, and, he, and they'll help win this game as well. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think Miami is really a, a contender this year, it looks good right now, but I think this game forward, um, Tua will look like a rookie more than he did last week, and uh, Arizona will win this game. Yeah, I'm going with Arizona, too, and it is it is because of Tua. I mean, he only threw for 93 yards last week. I don't think Arizona's going to turn the ball over 30 times like the Rams did in Jared Goff. I think Kyler Murray is also a legitimate MVP candidate right now, so I think he continues that run. The Miami matchup does seem like a soft matchup. If you, not even just looking at fantasy, but it looks like it feels like a matchup Kyler can just go off against. But this defense is pretty good, so I'm excited to see what gives there in that matchup. Yeah, I know everyone's just buying the Tua and the Dolphins hype right now. Um, but as you said, Roman, he didn't even play that well. And I believe the Rams outgained in terms of yards uh, the Dolphins by like 300 yards. They just kept turning the ball over. The Dolphins' defense is good. I think they're going to hang around in this game. But I think the Cardinals ultimately come up victorious. Um, so next up, we got a really interesting matchup, probably the game of the week. I know we've said that for a few games, but this is at least my pick for game of the week. Uh, maybe the next one, Patriots-Jets, that's also a very enticing mat matchup. But uh, we got Saints-Buccaneers, uh, Breeze versus Brady. Uh, the Saints, of course, um, got the upper hand in week one, but these teams really went on two different trajectories after that point for the most part. Um, so, Chris, do uh, you have Breeze and the Saints or Brady and the Bucks? Yeah, I've got Brady in the Bucks in this one. Uh, oh, uh, Breeze may have Michael Thomas back this week. Uh, he kind of got shut down by them last week. I think this is more of an indictment on the Tampa Bay defense. I think they're going to kind of clamp up the New Orleans Saints offense. And I also am – I just have been – this is a team that I thought about one of my most uh, disappointing teams. I don't really don't think they've looked that great. I mean, like I said, the Bears over them last week, and I almost was proven very right, and that was almost a, a very good call by me, but I, they couldn't get the job done, but I really wasn't impressed with the Saints in that game. I feel like they had no, a numerous chance to just put the put and get it done, so it, it's just been it's been a problem for them the whole year. Just 
I don't think this is a Super Bowl contending team, and I don't think this is a team that's really good. So give me the Bucs in this one. Yeah, week one, the same matchup. We all took New Orleans, but I figured that the Tampa Bay, de- uh, Tampa Bay team had some kinks to work out. I think they'll be much better this week, and obviously it'll be the debut of Antonio Brown, so it'll be interesting to see how he's integrated into these offense. I think he might even have a touchdown, um, but I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. And I'm not going to say a, a blowout or decently margin game, but I think it'll be a close one. Yeah, I, I also have Tampa Bay in this one. I think I, I think it's going to be a two-touchdown kind of game. Uh, I'm with you there, Chris. I think the Saints, they were also in contention for my uh, most disappointing team because I know Michael Thomas, I mean, whatever's going on with that situation has been pretty nuts and no one could have predicted it. But just overall, they have not looked as good. They have they not looked at the Super Bowl contender that many of yeah. us thought they were going to be headed into the year. But uh, mm-hmm. now we just got uh, just an absolute just dumpster fire of a matchup. Two teams – maybe two of the worst teams in the NFL, the Patriots um, who are awful and the Jets. Chris is already putting the Patriots in here. It's an automatic insert for him. Uh, Roman, what do you have? I'm not going to say the Jets are going to win this game, but if they are, this would be the game to do it. And especially against a low, low Patriots team coming off of a couple losses, um, it's kind of primed for them to maybe be competitive. But I'm going to go with the Patriots just because of Bill Belichick and the fact that I want the Jets to go on 16. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they have a chance, but I think uh, the best thing for a slump buster is to play the New York Jets, and I think the Patriots, while the, actually the game might be fairly close, just because the New England offense isn't that good, I, I believe they'll get the job done fairly easily. It's going to be a close game, but I'll be honest. When I do my picks, um, whenever I see t- Team X versus the Jets, I instantly put whoever they're playing. But this game, it, it made me kind of hesitate for a second. I was like, the Jets, as you said, Roman, I mean, if the, if the Jets are going to win a game, this would be the game they win. Uh, but Sam Darnold, I think his status is still kind of up in the air. Um, and I don't think – I think that Belichick just doesn't lose to the Jets. And if if he does lose to the Jets, I think it's safe to say that the Patriots empire is officially over if he ends up losing this game. And I think it, it might already be on its way out anyway. But um, that's all – for the pick em for week nine. Uh, we kind of differed on some picks. Uh, I think Roman, yeah, Roman could make up a lot of ground here. Um, I think I'm actually quite impressed with your picks because you're taking your shots and you could easily take the lead by next week. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and Chris, uh, Chris is taking some shots too. Um, he needs, really needs Buffalo and the Chargers to squeak out some victories here if he wants yeah. to uh, regain his in- insurmountable lead. Uh, on the yeah, pick up. We'll, have to, we'll have to wait and see what happens. It'll be fun to talk about in next week's episode. But now we're going to move on to the fantasy starts of the week. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of an, another element to this part. Um, we're going to kind of each give a fantasy MVP along with our two picks of the week um, so far at the midseason. Um, so, Chris, we'll do the uh, MVP at the end after we're done. Um, but, Chris, why don't you start us off here with your fantasy start of the week? Yeah, my fantasy start of the week is Marvin Jones from the Detroit Lions. Uh, uh, as much as I think this team is not going to win the game, uh, no Kenny G means Marvin Jones is going to see plenty of targets in a uh, – Cam Dantzler will be out of the game as well. So, I mean, that's that's less less margin for the Minnesota Vikings to stop him. He's coming off a two-touchdown game. This could easily be a game where he puts up one for 12 and doesn't score a touchdown. But I think he's got a lot of upside, a guy that in, in a – in a bye week with a lot or uh, a week with a lot of buys, a lot of options, tough options and start sit decisions. I think Marvin Jones is more than a flex option for this week. Plenty of upside. Yeah, I, I agree. He was actually, he wasn't my pick, um, but he was in consideration for sure. I think uh, with the target share there with the weak Minnesota um, defense, uh, I think uh, Marvin Jones, uh, could have a big game. I think he's uh, he was he had a really rough start to the year, but I think he's been okay for the most part as well. Um, I can jump into my first fantasy pick of the week right now, um, and it's going to be a guy who we were all kind of high on a little bit um, headed into the year, but a lot of people thought he was washed. Uh, it's David Johnson. Uh, he's quietly been a, a top twenty on running back, uh, not a high ceiling on him, but definitely um, also not a very low floor. He kind of get, gets you consistently. 10 to you know 17 18 points um, a week um, and he's going up against the Jaguars this week who are the 28th worst team in terms of fantasy points against running backs I think Johnson could have a big week against the week Jacksonville um, and he's a definitely must start typically an RB2 I think he has an easy chance to be an RB1 uh, this week and can finally um, get over that 20 point plateau 
Yeah, I don't know about 20 points, but I do like David Johnson this week to be at least a high-end RB2. I think he'll finish. I think he'll get in the end zone, catch a couple of passes. It's just a matter of if he can get some yards, maybe score multiple touchdowns to really give you that ceiling week. But I think this is a week where he has a chance to become a water, uh, running back one, like you said. Yeah, for my pick, just out on top of this game, I think the tandem of Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks are both great starts this week. Um, considering that Will Fuller was not traded, he's definitely a must-start this week. And, and even Cooks has some value as well. So kind of the base off of, of uh, your more Anderson pick last week, I think you know, both of these wide receivers are good. Hopefully, hopefully you have more really success well. with that pick than I did last week because more and Anderson were not great against the weak, quote-unquote weak Atlanta offense because Teddy Two Gloves just doesn't like to throw the ball and he just likes to check down to his running backs all the time. But we don't have to get into that right now anyway. Um, Brandon Cooks, though, he's been really good. He's been quietly pretty good after a, a slow start to the year. Um, and they're coming off a bye as well. Um, so were those your two picks, Roman? It was Cooks and Fuller? No, I just wanted to put them together, but I can go with my second pick, right. actually, with his uh, Justin Jackson running back from the Chargers. Um, he's definitely going to be a, a good, interesting play, a spot, mm -hmm. a spot start this week, although depending on Eckler's progression, he could be used in the next couple of weeks as well. But I think, you know, this matchup between the Char uh, Raiders and Chargers, you can pretty much start most of the fantasy-relevant players in this game. I think they all have yeah. good stat lines. I think there will be a lot of points. Um, I expect Herbert to have a good game, which in turn would feed the rest of his offense. Um, Jackson would definitely get a lot of work. I think he's the running back one over Kelly, although Kelly could probably steal a touchdown. Um, Jackson should be a good play as well. Now, the only thing Kelly's stealing is maybe a play sheet on the sideline because this guy, <laughs> Justin Jackson, was uh, was actually my next was going to be my next pick as well. Uh, the Raiders can't cover, can't stop the running back position. Uh, Jackson is getting tons of work. Uh, I regret trading him earlier in the season, and I also am playing against him this week, so I'm not excited for this pick, but it would have been one of mine as well. I don't know, though, because Kareem Hunt was supposed to have a really monster week last week. Against, I know the yeah. weather played a role there, but he, mm -hmm. he did not have a good week. Um, so True, um, but I, I think Justin Jackson is still good. Yeah. He's yeah. definitely at least a flex option, if not a mid-tier RB2. For sure. For yeah, sure. I'm, I'm flexing him, so you know he's worth it. Yeah, Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly had a good first two weeks, but he has Stop. not he's done so, anything. He's one of the worst running backs Ever. in the NFL. This guy can't do – he can't catch the ball. He doesn't block well out of the backfield. He runs in a straight line uh, and he falls down. He's he's one of the – he's a chunker. He's not someone that actually has talent. It's just about whether or not someone opens up a hole for him to run through. And that's – Justin Jackson actually has a little bit of juice until – at least until Austin Eckler comes back. So I do like him to lead this backfield in carries. All right. I always love a good Chris rant. Was not anticipating it to be against Josh Kelly this week, but hey, it's it's always it's always enjoyable to listen. But Chris, how would you jump into your uh, second fantasy pick of the week? Yeah, my second pick. Uh, well, it would have been Justin Jackson, but uh, I will go ahead and go with. I'm calling the shot. I think Jerry Judy has a breakout week this week. Uh, he's taking on the Atlanta Falcons, which Drew he went he went to the Flames against this team last week and was very disappointed. But you have to factor in the weather in that game. The weather most likely will not be a factor in this game, especially going into a dome in Atlanta. I don't think the weather is going to be a big deal in that. Um, Drew Locke looked a little better. Judy finally was receiving a, a target share that I'm, I'm happy about. He, he got 10 targets. He only caught four of them against the uh, Chargers defense, which I believe he was getting shadowed by uh, Casey Hayward. So, uh, uh, like, that's a tough matchup. You can't fault him for only going four for 71, which is not a bad stat line. I think he can be started as a flex option and has some upside, but I'm calling for the shot. I think this is his – his breakout week, I think he gets at least 90 yards, maybe gets into the end zone as well. Uh, Atlanta is a perfect matchup to do it in, and um, a reason why I picked them to win over Atlanta. Yeah, that was that was kind of my thinking when Atlanta played Detroit a few weeks ago that you could pretty much start any Lions player and they'd have a good stat line. But um, this might be a similar case to that, although obviously Judy has been in more of a rhythm with the offense and Locke is playing well, so it's definitely possible. And like you said, he's, I'd, I'd be more comfortable with him as a flex. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I don't have much to add there. I agree. I, I was curious, um, Chris, when I saw you put Judy in your starting lineup, and now it makes a little more sense um, in our fantasy league uh, if you have him as your breakout, having, him, having a breakout performance here against Atlanta. Um, right. Again, I'm just kind of blinded because uh, last week what happened with both my picks. Um, but as you said, the weather probably played a, a huge role in that. It did. It definitely um, did. 
So hopefully Judy has uh, a little more success against the weak Atlanta offense or uh, Atlanta defense. I mean, uh, but for my final pick, um, I'm also kind of do take a similar page out of Chris's play- playbook and pick a player who I'm also starting in my fantasy league this week. And it's Juju Smith Schuster um, against Dallas, who is currently the 26th uh, passing or 26 gets up to 26 most points to receivers in terms of fantasy. Um, and I know there's there's a lot of a lot of mouths to feed there. Uh, with Deontay Johnson, uh, James Conner, Eric Ebron even. But uh, Juju, he had a really good start start to the year and then cut, really fell off. And he's had a, two really solid weeks um, back-to-back. Uh, this Dallas defense is not good. Um, and I, I anticipate Deontay Johnson getting hurt at least some point in this game. Oh, and even, even if it's not for like the season or multiple weeks, it's going to cost him a couple quarters. Um, I think Juju gets some target shares, maybe maybe finds the end zone, um, has, has a good week. Um, you can probably put him – he might be like your top receiver on your team if you drafted him high. So you probably he's probably still a must start. But if you kind of bought low on him like I did, um, you can probably flex him this week, and he he could be a really solid high end wide receiver two option in my opinion. Yeah, uh, Juju. I mean, it's I would basically just select Deontay, him, and Claypool for wide receiver two picks every week. I mean, one of them is probably going to bust, but the other two most likely will do well as long as Deontay Johnson can stay healthy which he cannot, and he's in my lineup every week, and my fantasy team, so it just absolutely pissed me off. This guy cannot stay healthy because when he is, he gets like 20 targets a game, which is he, and he produces very well for my fantasy team. But uh, Juju, yeah, I like him this week. I think he could smash in this matchup. Uh, it's just a matter of if Dallas can put up any points on the board, which I don't expect. But I, honestly, even then, Juju could get in the end zone early in the game, get a couple nice grabs, and, and give you wide receiver two production with some upside. Yeah, I, I certainly agreed with you, Drew, when you got to the point about if you draft them high, you have to play him. If you bought low, just take a shot on him. I think that's kind of where I'm at with him as well. Um, obviously, if he does have any value, it would probably come in the first half or so because I do think um, the Steelers' offense will have the ball for the majority of that game, and we could pretty much see a, a run-heavy attack in the second half depending on what the score is. So depends on what the game script is. We can either see um, a lot of receiving work by any of those wide receivers on that team or just a full James Conner show in the second half. Yeah, it's definitely a concern if they get two up in this game. Uh, they just hand the ball to James Conner 50,000 times. But I will go back to last week um, against the Jets where the Chiefs continued to throw the ball in the fourth quarter and Tyreek Hill got a late, long touchdown. So it seems like the teams just don't run the clock out anymore, and maybe that's bad sportsmanship, but I feel like hopefully the Steelers uh, will kind of keep going, and, and hopefully the Cowboys um, kind of keep up at least a little bit in this one. But um, before we close things out for this episode, um, we'll just quickly run through our fancy MVPs. Um, I'm not sure who wants to start us off, um, but I Rowan volunteered. So here, go ahead, take it away. Yeah, after looking at some of these players and where we perceive them uh, in the draft process, because we've done a couple mock drafts, so we kind of know where these guys went um, around that time. My MVP is Tom Brady. A very went, very wait went very late in drafts and in standard leagues, he's the quarterback five. So. Very, very good pick if you draft them at that point. We always preach quarterback late. This is one of those examples where it definitely paid off for you. Um, so very well, very good pick, whoever got him, and uh, my MVP for sure. Yeah, I'll go ahead. I, I definitely like that pick uh, for the draft capital. Definitely a a thought for that. I'm going to go with the duo of Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, kind of in the mid-round picks, which usually is kind of like a, a spot where I don't really like to go with quarterbacks or tight ends. I think both Russ and Kyler have had absolutely monster weeks uh, and would have probably been, if you knew you were getting this production for both of them, they would have been easily in that Patrick Mahomes tier, uh, third round, second round pick around where Drew took them in one of our mock drafts. He took, he took Mahomes up in, I believe, the third round. I, I believe these two would have been up in that discussion as well, maybe even a little bit earlier. Uh, these are guys that have been mainstays in your lineup and have carried multiple people to wins this year, especially Kyler Murray with his rushing performance and big big numbers for him in, in certain matchups. But I, I like both of them as MVP candidates for fantasy. I thought I was going to be a little bit off the wall here because I have a very similar pick for my MVP. I thought you guys would maybe go running back or wide receiver, but I have a very similar pick for very similar reasons. He's a guy who I think could be comeback player of the year and MVP leading one of the best teams in the NFC, and that's Aaron Rodgers on the Green Bay Packers. I knew it. Um, this is – this is a guy who I'm a little biased because I did this strategy and it worked very well for me, but he was going 
super, super late in drafts. Uh, everybody was out on him. Everybody thought he was done. I think I picked him after I picked the defense. That's how late he went in our draft. Uh, but he's he's uh, he's the fifth best fantasy quarterback um, in fantasy right now, and that's including he's already had his bye week, and he had the one week. Of course, gave him a little knock where he only had three points against Tampa Bay. But aside from that, he's had at least 19 points every single week, average to 22 and a half points. And as I said, he's a top five fantasy quarterback, kind of returning to that form that we've, we saw him have pretty much for the entire 2010s decade in fantasy football, a top end quarterback. And this is a guy, like I said, you could have drafted him as your backup in most leagues. He was, he had, you could have maybe even picked him up off of waivers um, depending on what league you're in. And he really helped me out personally for my fantasy team. And, and I'm sure helped um, everybody else out because you could have had uh, two really good quarterback options, maybe traded them. Um, and Rand Rodgers has been really, really good um, both in real life and in fantasy. Yeah, I kind of want to throw some other names out there because when you talk about MVP in fantasy terms, it doesn't necessarily mean from start to finish who's played the best. It's kind of what players you pick off off the wire wire that are very beneficial to your team and win you some games. So a couple of names I'd like to throw out there, are James Robinson, we talked about earlier, um, very yeah. huge play if you picked him up. And even Mike Davis for the Christian McCaffrey yeah. owners who picked him up, very beneficial. Although, you know, McCaffrey will probably come back and Davis's value will probably drop. For those weeks you played him, he was an MVP type guy and very, very beneficial to your team. Yeah, I, I agree with both of those. Uh, James Robinson was, he's a monster. This guy's a very good player. Uh, also, Mike Davis, uh, shout out to you, man. You helped me win a couple weeks. Uh, I appreciate it off the waiver wire. Wasn't really expecting big things, but I did get some big things from him. So, I mean, if CMC goes back down, I will absolutely happily plug him back in the lineup. I'll even throw uh, one more name, DK Metcalf. I'll, I'll do it in spite of Chris because yeah. he just traded yeah. him away um, because no. he's, been a, he's been a great wide receiver, and uh, I think he'll continue the stretch throughout the season. Even even Alvin Kamara too. I mean, he's a guy. I don't yeah. know he went first round, but he went late first round. He's been probably. I mean, you talk right. about most valuable player. When you take draft stock out of it, I think he might be the best fantasy yeah. player this year. Yeah, he was. Um, uh, he was. I I considered him as well. He was on my list of three. I guess I probably should have just set him with the collection of Russ and Kyler as well. But th those three for sure are my top feet, top three MV MVP candidates for this year. Yeah. Well, unless um, anybody else has anything else to add, um, that'll conclude this episode of the Zone Defense Podcast. Again, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Spotify and Twitter at Zone Defense Pod, and you can also search us on Apple Podcasts. Um, also, drop a comment down below. We'd love to hear your midseason awards, uh, your fantasy MVPs at this point, your most disappointing teams, all that stuff. We'd love to read those, and we'll definitely respond um, if you drop them down below. Um, but that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace. See ya.